Hi everyone, it's Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts and this is going to be a hopefully short, quick demo on how to use Karen Dosh uh, watercolor, water soluble uh, Neo Color pencil set. Well, actually they're not pencils, they're really more like crayons. In fact, I think the official name here is water soluble color wax pastels. And I've really come to enjoy these uh, for using on big surface projects such as this one, which is one of the Zen by the Sea blocks. So I've already pulled out some of my colors and I'm going to put the tin away for the time being, but let's just talk a little bit about some of the other supplies that I'm using. Um, I have a variety of fabric mediums here. I'm just going to show you real quick. This is a great fabric medium by Golden and it's, it's thin but if you use it properly, this has probably got the most softest touch when it dries as to just about anything else that I use. Uh, so I'm gonna set that aside. Uh, Ceramicraft is another great one. It's made by Delta. This one is typically found in either Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Um, so if you look in their fabric painting section, which I believe most of them have, or wherever the fabric paints are, you'll find the, uh, the bottle of Delta. Again, good stuff. And then I have a bottle of my own, and um, this is called Pearlescent Fabric Medium. And what I do is, is I have uh, some, some chemical that I get that's just pure pearlescent, and I mix it in with my fabric medium that I make up. And that's one of the things I'm going to be using here today. Also a variety of brushes. Um, because these are bigger, um, I've got some bigger tips. All of these, however, the thing that they have in common is that they're Taclon. Uh, they're, they're stiff, as you can see. Um, they're all hard to kind of push. That's actually what you want. Um, they've got various different types of tips to use depending on what kind of area I'm trying to get into. So without further ado, I'm going to set my brushes aside here real quick and actually sit down as I was standing as I was filming this. Um, I'm going to move my crayons. Now, let's talk a little bit about what's different um, in Zen by the Sea than what I have done in previous coloring quilt block of the month series. These are actually going to all be appliques. And if you notice, I have stitched a very solid uh, satin stitch around each one of these. All of the Zen by the Sea critters, in fact, let me just pull over, I have some more here that I'm going to be coloring later, and I'll just show you. These are a bunch of shells. If you'll notice, they all have a very thick line around. Uh, that is so that you can, when you're finished coloring them, that you can easily cut them out uh, here are some of the fish. Let me show you these here real quick. So see, each one of them have very thick lines so that when you go to cut them out, it's very easy. You don't cut actually into the fish because you have a nice, thick, heavy-duty line. Um, oh, and let me just show you. I'm, I'm so proud of these. I actually created these myself. These are the seahorses. So as you can see, very thick lines, very easy to color makes them really stand out. And that's what's different, is that these are all going to be appliqued onto fabric. Now you can do it like I've done my quilt, or you can certainly applique these onto your own blocks or other fabric and turn them into the kind of quilt that you want. So putting my crayons here where I can see them isn't that big a deal. Like in the past, you didn't want to have any kind of potential for getting color on this background, but we don't care because the background is actually going to be used. Um, actually, it's not going to be used. It's, you're just gonna to toss it away. Unless you decide to use this as a single block, of course, then you wanna take your colors off and, and, and take care of not to get any coloring on here. But we're ultimately going to cut in here. So one of the things that I like about this series is that you can do little samples of coloring here, and I'm gonna do that in a minute to see what kind of what you've got as far as colors and uh, then you can go ahead and apply it to your surface. Okay, I'm going to start out um, using mine, fabric medium, and I pour about uh, the size of a quarter uh, into my little pan here. You can use Dixie cups, you can use a plate, paper plates, anything that would 
you know, contain the fabric medium. And um, I'm not gonna take my brush out yet. What I'm gonna start doing is, just like what we talked about, I'm gonna set the purple. The purple is gonna be used here. The turquoise is going to be used here. So I'm gonna start out with the turquoise first. And what I like to tell people is, see, this, uh, these are so easy to color with. These are the Caran d'Ache. And I'm just gonna color them kind of together to see kind of how they blend, show you how they blend, and the neat kind of features that I like about this. First of all, if you'll notice, this stuff goes on very, very smooth. It's like butter. And it's literally like you used a tube of butter to, to, to color with. And now I'm just gonna take up my brush and dip it in the fabric medium. And as you can see, see, it's just like ink tense pencils, but I think they've got just the ability to be a, a lighter color, maybe not so heavily as intense, and, and their blendability is phenomenal. I just really love how well they blend. So that's why I've kind of taken up with these. Um, and then of course you'll let it dry and um, heat set it and then it will be washable. So that's what I'm using here today. Um, the technique really is very simple. Um, I think what I'll do is, is I'll start kind of, uh, I, like, I like when I do this to just start in the middle. Um, I'm not gonna be super fancy about the, this um, because really what you're going to do is once you get it, the fabric medium down, you're gonna come back in and color over areas that maybe need some intenser color. But I'm just gonna do this one here to kind of give you a, a quick demo and just lay that color down. Notice I'm not being super careful. I'm just laying it down. And then perhaps maybe I want maybe a different, uh, deeper shade as we approach the edges. I'm gonna overlap just a tiny bit with the light turquoise, with the darker turquoise, and color all around. And again, notice not being super careful. Um, you really don't wanna be. You wanna kind of give this almost a natural feel. What you do want to do though is work that color right up along the stitching line. Um, we'll work the, because this is such a nice stiff satin stitch, you can work the fabric medium into the satin stitch without worrying about it going into the outer edge. And of course you don't care if it goes into the outer edge because you're going to be cutting these later on. Um, I will do a, a, a class or a quick demo on cutting these out at a later date and time. Right now I'm trying to focus more on the coloring and getting the instructions finished. It's, it's kind of the bane of writing these things. Once you do the quilt, you're, you just wish that you could wiggle your nose and the instructions were written by themselves. But anyway, they're not and that's what I'm working on today and probably for the rest of this week is getting instructions written. Okay, so that's colored. I'm not gonna bother with the rest of them just yet. And yes, typically you'd work from the middle and work out, but this is demo purposes. So just like we did before, and I will start up towards the top, you start in the middle and kind of in a circular motion, just work your brush towards the edge. And let me see if I can get my hand out of the way because I know it's in the way when I do this. Just push the fabric medium up against the stitching, just like what I'm doing right there. And when you feel like you, or you don't see the color changing, you notice how dramatic, by the way, you see the difference between the color here and when you put the fabric medium on. It, it's just like ink tense pencils. It's just, it always astounds me at how different the color looks when you color with it. Which is why I always say to people, color lightly first, because you can always go back in and add color later, but it's extremely hard to go dark and then try to lighten up later. You have to usually use a white pen or a pencil and it never comes out nearly looking as well as, as it should. Um, so you wanna be very careful to always try to go light because you can always go dark later on. Okay, and you see how quickly this is going. This is, this is just not hard. I think this is the difference between this series and the Animals Gone Zen series. If any of you have ever gone onto my website and taken a look at the Animals Gone Zen block of the month that I did last year, 
Um, there's a lot more coloring. I, I kind of wanted the Animals Gone Zen to be a learning tool, whereas this one is, hey, let's just have color and have fun. And, and yes, you learn things. Everybody learns things, but it's not quite as difficult to color as Animals Gone Zen was. So I'm really loving how this is turning out. This is, this is fantastic. I'm very, very happy with this. Oops, okay, so great. It doesn't matter because when we cut this out, nobody will see that. So maybe that's the other reason why these are so much easier is that the need to stay with inside the lines isn't really all that necessary. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with this dark blue or this deeper turquoise and just deepen the base up a little bit, maybe even come into this one. So while it's still wet, you can do that and then come back over and, and blend it nicely and bring it into the lighter area up here on top. And that's great. That's it. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of these over here. Um, nothing in particularly different about this. The only thing I will say, when you are painting leaves or something that sits behind the back of something. In other words, this leaf looks like it's behind these two leaves right here. You'll always want to make this darker and this lighter so that these pop uh, when you're doing this. It's the same thing really with over here. So let me just kind of demo what I'm trying to say. Oh, here's another trick. You can actually dip the tip of your uh, tool directly into it and start coloring and see, ooh, see how nice and dark that is. And that's precisely what I'm trying to do, is I want kind of a darker look for anything that sits behind the front part of the coral. This way it gives it a 3D effect, um, and it will just help define uh, where the coral is in relation to the other pieces. Also, um, when you cut this out, it really makes it so much easier to see when these back pieces are darker against uh, the fabric that, well, at least that I chose to be my background fabric. So let me just grab some fabric medium here real quick. We'll smooth this out. And notice, I just, again, can't stress how much I love these crayons. Um, I think they come up to a 60 crayon set but as I also said earlier in another video, these are certainly not cheap coloring tools. Um, but if you can afford them, you see how easy they, they, they do, I, I would encourage everyone to step out there and at least buy maybe a small set and put them in your repertoire of things to use to color on fabric. So, I think this is just about enough. I don't know what else I could demo in this particular video. Uh, stay tuned, that is my plan this week is to try to get more of my Zen by the Sea little videos. I'm not gonna make any more of those horrible hour long videos that I was doing earlier. I thought those were probably as about as worthless as anything I've ever done. Um, instead, I'm going to try to limit these to short little videos and smaller little clips, smaller bites, so that you're not so overwhelmed initially when watching these. Okay, so there you have it. Hope that helps. And again, as always, if you need any help, you can contact me at medinadomarts at aol.com. That's M-E-D-I-N-A-D-O-M. A-R-T-S at AOL.com. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.